wabarakatuh in satu nisa via lani uh, about siratun miras uh, the sciences of inheritance uh, the sciences of inheritance is known as ilmul miras or ilmul fard ilmul miras or ilmul fard refers to the sciences of inheritance the shares that are obligated on one another on the basis of the relationship shared with the one whose property is being distributed and inherited. It is not obligated on everybody to learn the science of distribution of shares in details, but those who are good at maths, it is beneficial for them to learn them. Okay, But uh, there are three things one should be aware of. So we are starting. What are those? Inshallah, uh, we did last time till ayah number 10. So today we are starting from ayah number 11, inshallah. Uh, Namaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem amma baad fa'audhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem bismillahi rahmani rahim rabbi shrahli sadri wa yasilli amri wa ahlul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli alhamdulillahi al-mutafarridu bi kamali zati wa jameeli sifati al-manazati an mushabahati an mushabahati al-makhluqati wa hata ilman bi jami al kainati wa wasiya sam'uhu jami al aswati alhamdulillah alladhi la khaira illa minhu wa la fadla illa min ladunhu all praise be to allah who is all alone unique in his perfect nature and whose attributes are beautiful far above the resemblance of creatures he has surrounded the entire universe with his knowledge and his hearing surrounds all sounds all praise be to Allah. There is no goodness except from Him and bounties, grace and mercy come only from Him. So, inshallah, we are starting uh, our lesson. Uh, you all know that we were uh, learning science of inheritance in, uh, in Surah Al-Nisa. I number 10, 11, 12, you know, is about Ilmul Fard, Ilmul Miras, uh, and we did it pretty much. So today we are starting from ayah number 11, inshallah, the knowledge of al farai Okay. So let's start, inshallah. Bismillah rahman And our juice is four. Everybody knows juice four, right? So what to our translation, inshallah, first of ayah number 11. Ayah number 11, what to our translation? You see kumullahu, you see he, he wills, commands, kum, you all. You see kum, he means Allah. He wills, commands you all, Allahu, Allah, fi, in concerning, aula dikum, aula children, kum, your, aula dikum, your children, lid dakari, li, for, al dakari, the male, lid dakari is for the male, mithlu, like, hasbi, good share, al unsayaini, of the two females, Fain for then in if fain then if kunna they were our nisan women fauka above us nataini two females falahunna for so love for hunna them falahunna so for them hunna noon is due to uh, feminine right sulutha two thirds ma of what taraka he left were and in if kanat she was is wahidatan single one falaha for so love for her her falaha so is for her annis the half wali abawai he were and li is for abawai parents he his wali abawai he for his parents li kulli li for kulli all every wahidin of one min huma min from huma them to min huma from them to as sudusu the one six mimma it was min and ma min from ma what mimma from what taraka he left in if kana he was is lahu for him waladun a child fa in then if lam did not yakun he be is Lahu for him, Waladun, a child, were and Varisa, Varisa, who Varisa inherited who him, Varisa, who inherited him, 
अबवाहु अबवा पेरेंट्स हु हिज अबवाहु हिज पेरेंट्स फली उम्मी ही फर सो ली फॉर उम्मी मदर ही हिज फली उम्मी ही सो फॉर इज हर मदर अस फुलुसु द वन थर्ड फिन फर देन इन इफ फिन देन इफ काना ही वॉज इज Lahu for him, ikhwatun brothers, <coughs> fali ummihi then for his mother. These are all the shares of inheritance. As sudusu the one sixth min from badi after wasiyatin a will bequest. You see he fulfills terms of the will bequest. Biha be with her, it her biha with her. Au or Dainin a death, abau um abau parents for fathers um your abau um your par parents for fathers wa abna um wa and abna um offsprings children um your abna um your offspring offsprings children la do not the druna you all know ayu um which of them are you which whom of them are you whom which of them aqrabu is nearer closer lakum for you naf'an in benefit profit faridatan a duty ordain fixed share min from allahi allah inna indeed allah allah kana he was is aliman one always all knowing hakiman one always all wise so we do the running translation inshallah which are among the lines <coughs> ayah number 11 this is ayah 11 surah an-nisa uh, allah commands you concerning your children that the share of a boy shall be twice that of a girl in the in the case where there are more than two girls their share will be two thirds of the estate but if there is only one girl he uh, the her share will be one half of the estate if the deceased left children behind each of the parents shall get one sixth of the estate subhanallah everything is clear but if the deceased left no children and the parents are the only heirs the mother shall get one third of the estate but if the deceased left brothers and sisters then the mother will get one sixth of it the distribution in all cases will be after fulfilling the terms of the last will and the payment of debts with regards to your parents and your children you do not know who is more beneficial to you therefore allah has issued this ordinance surely allah is the knowledgeable wise surely allah is the knowledgeable wise so we'll do this inshallah tafsir okay now we see here uh you see kumullahu fi auladikum allah commands you for your children's inheritance okay uh to the male a portion equal to that of two females if one daughter is two or more their share is two thirds of the inheritance if only one <coughs> daughter her share is half for parents a sixth share of the inheritance to each if the deceased left children if no they haven't left any children and the parents are the only heirs the mother has a third and uh, if the deceased left brothers or sisters the mother has a sixth mimbadi wasiyatin ucbha or dain the distribution in all cases is after the payment of uh, their debts he may have bequeathed or debts uh, you know not which of them whether your parents or your children are nearest to you in benefit these fixed shares are ordained by allah and allah is ever all knower or wise okay so here we see that uh, first we'll try to i'll sum up some uh, you know uh, uh, paragraphs as uh, up some i i will sum up some things uh, so in order you may be able to understand i number 11 12 okay so anyways we have done word to word translation and learning translation so and sum up uh, uh, you know 10 i number 10 11 12 until and unless you won't be able to understand so these verses are known as siratul miraz 
Sriratul Miras refers to ayahs that deals with the shares of inheritance for both men and women. For both men and women. Uh, the science of inheritance is known as Ilmul Miras or Ilmul Fad. What it is known? Ilmul Miras or Ilmul Fad. Right? Okay. Okay. Uh, Ilmul Miras or Ilmul Fad refers to the science of inheritance. The shares are that are obligated. No one other on the basis of the relationship shared with the one whose property is being distributed and inherited. It is not obliged on everybody to learn the science of distribution of shares in detail, but those who are good at mass, it is beneficial <clears throat> uh, for them to learn them. But there are three things one should be aware of. See, number one, the first thing is the property or, st or state of the deceased, the person who has died is being distributed after their death. We cannot distribute before the death, okay? Sure. Yeah, when they are died, then we can distribute the inheritance. Okay, okay. We should do that thing, science of inheritance. This, the yeah, science of okay. inheritance. So I'll sum up, then we will be able to understand I eleven and twelve. Okay. Anyways, we did word to word translation. Okay, okay. So first thing, listen. The first thing is the property or state of the disease is being distributed after their death. Everybody knows before their death, we cannot distribute the inheritance, right? The second thing is that the hairs. Who are that? Well, who are the heirs? The one, the the person dies, and the relatives are the heirs who will uh, receive the inheritance of the death dead person. The second thing is that the heirs who are directly related to the dead person deserve a share in the dead person's property. Each case is unique and different from one another. Your father's inheritance will be different from that of your uh, mother, different from your brothers. The third thing is state or the property the disease has left behind may be tangible, like tangible means gold, money, building, right? And it can be intangible stuff like copyrights, authority over a business, okay? The distribution, if shares is basically done by a person who has a knowledge of inheritance, may be a lawyer or a relative, okay? At times, a person is de deprived of his shares of inheritance. They may be a father of someone, a husband of someone, or a son, son of someone who technically deserve a share, but they will not be given. And it happens. People, you know, they are deprived, you know. Uh, uh, they are deprived. They are not given the shares. This is generally in the case where they, where they are the murderer. Likewise, if the person is of different faith or different religion, the law of inheritance does not take place. This law of inheritance is only for the Muslims, right? Difference of religion obstructs the laws of inheritance. The state, whenever I say state, it means the property, E-S-T-A-T-E, -E, right? Okay. Not our, our USA state, right? Not S-T-A-T-E, okay? I'm talking about property, state. You know the state business and everything, property agent. The state, E-S-T-A-T-E. -E. The state has to be divided regardless of age, status, gender. In fact, even the presence or absence of the person does not make any difference. It has to be divided among everybody irrelevant to whether a person is going to live for a few moments. Okay, If uh, the parents die and uh, almost, you know, most of the time in the world is so small, the children are always, you know, abroad. Some in Canada, some in USA, some in and somebody uh, parents die in India, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. So the the brothers and sisters who are there, they can't say that our sister, other sisters and brothers are out of the country. They are not going to get no. They are also going to get the uh, property because they are the heirs of the parents. Okay, okay. <clears throat> if wife is pregnant, okay, uh, uh, and if the person is going to the person does not make any difference. It has to be divided among everybody irrelevant to whether a person is going to live for a few moments and you know some you know diseases like cancer and you know these sorts of diseases doctor you know give the time also that she or he may be alive only for 18 months or 12 months or it's the qadr of allah but you know you know they give approximate time but the death happens when allah is so now we are not going to say oh he's going to die after a few moments or few seconds or few months i'm not going to give the property 
uh, you know, the inheritance to my such brother and sister. No. If the wife is pregnant, then the property of the husband will be distributed only after the birth of his child. Because if it is a girl, then the share will be different. And if it is a boy, then the share will be different. Everything has to be divided, including their clothes, their spoons, glasses, everything that belongs to the dead person, their cell phones, their cloth, everything, everything will be divided, you know, of the deceased, of the dead person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, before the estate is divided, following measures are to be considered. Any will left behind by the deceased should be paid off first. You know, if the deceased, the dead person has got the debt, he has borrowed money or anything that should be paid or if he has, you know, many, uh, that should be paid. Outstanding payments like loans, bills or commitment to give in the way of Allah should be met before the distribution of the shares. Okay. So there are three kinds of heirs. Who are the heirs? The heirs who will get the inheritance. Okay. So number one, usul, meaning foundations. Root heirs such as parents and grandparents. What is usul? Usul meaning foundations, root hairs such as parents and grandparents. Furur branched out from them such as children, grandchildren and more generations down. Hawashi margins such as siblings or paternal uncles. Allah SWT instructs us concerning our children regarding which child will inherit how much. This is all in this you know, surah. The male child will inherit a share equal to the share of two female children. This means double the share of the female child. If the daughters are getting $100,000, so rupees or, you know, pes, you know, whatever the currency, you will live in that country, okay? So the male child, the if the daughters are getting $100,000, the son will get $200,000, okay? Double. This is Allah's, you know, uh, Allah's ordained us, okay? So we shouldn't have any, you know, why male too, because when the male get married, he has to give meher and then he has to buy, give the house also, living place, whether on rent or whether on... And plus, if the parents die, then the if a small younger brother, siblings are also there, he has to keep them also. If some divorced uh, sister has come, he keeps uh, that sister also. And sometimes even the sisters or fathers are also living. Even the grandmother is living there. So he has to take care of, you know, uh, of all the people and he is a bread earner okay the uh, fulfilling the expenses of the family depends on the male member right not on the woman if the daughters are given hundred thousand dollars nobody will tell them uh, you know by law by islamic law that you spent on us right and if they are earning and if they are spending then it is a sadka if they are earning the parents or the siblings or the husband so it's a sadka for them subhanallah Okay, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs us concerning our children regarding which child will, in, will inherit how much. If a man leaves behind only daughters, be it two or more, then two daughters, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for all of them combined is two thirds of the entire state to be equally amongst all of them. And if he leaves behind only one daughter, then for her is half of the entire state. Okay, for parents is one sixth of the estate each. If the deceased leaves behind both parents and children, then the parents get one sixth of the entire estate each and the rest is divided amongst the children. But in case a man leaves behind no children, then for mother is one third of the estate. If he leaves behind siblings, then the mother receives one sixth. More the hair shares will be de uh, decreased because each one deserves the right of inheritance. As mentioned uh, above, the inheritance takes place on only <clears throat> after the following two conditions as met. Will in the favor of a non hair example, uh, if the deceased person says, uh, give my uncle a third of property, then it has to be paid off first outstanding payments if any loans money in the way of allah if the deceased has told us if the wife leaves behind husband no children then the husband inherit inherits half of the estate and the other half would be distributed among the her family members right 
but if the woman leaves behind children then for husband is a quarter of the wife's estate the woman also has the right to make a will and take a loan just like a man does and similarly these two things have to be paid off first before the distribution take place if a man does not have children and leaves behind a wife a more wives then for each one is a quarter and the rest is divided among the parents and children because men are you know men can islamically men can marry four wife you know four wives if he is do he can do justice with the four wives so in that case he dies and he has got more than one wife so each wife will get one quarter okay and the rest will be divided among the parents and children if you leave behind children then for wife is 1/8 of the estate if a man or a woman who does not have parents or children but has but has two siblings then for them is a sixth of the estate each if the siblings are more than two uh, if the siblings are more than two then a third of the estate will be divided amongst them if a man or woman who does not have parents or children but has two siblings then for them is a sixth of the estate each if the siblings are more than two then a third of the estate will be divided amongst them as said earlier all this will happen only after the payment of will and outstanding payments are being met okay if the payments are still pending but the dead person's property has finished then paying of debts is the responsibility of family members the family members has to pay the debts of the deceased okay allah subhanahu wa taala says a will should not be made for more than a third of the estate in order to harm your heirs or depriving them of their rights these are the limits set by the most perfect allah subhanahu wa taala it is a boundary set in order to obey the commands of our rabb true success is not how much wealth you leave behind for your children but it is entry to jannah okay so now we'll go through the ayahs inshallah and we'll see the tafsir also you know okay inshallah so now this will be clear to us okay so so uh, the knowledge of al farai okay learning the various shares of the inheritance is encouraged this the following and the last honorable ayah in this surah contain the knowledge of al farai inheritance the knowledge of al farai is derived from these three ayat 10 11 12 and the, from the hadith on this subject which explain them learning this knowledge is encouraged especially the specific things mentioned in the ayat ibn uyaina said knowledge of al faraid was called half of knowledge because it affects all people i would repeat again ibn uyaina said uyaina said knowledge of al faraid the science of inheritance was called half of knowledge because it affects all people okay the reason behind uh, revealing ayah number 11 we did what to a translation right and running translate explaining this ayah al bukhari recorded that jabir bin abdullah said prophet sallam came visiting me prophet sallam came to visit whom jabir jabir radhiyallahu anhu right uh, on foot with abu abakar Abu Bakr and Banu Salma's dwellings, and the Prophet found me unconscious. Hazrat Jabir was unconscious. He asked for some water, performed ablution with it, and then poured it on me, and I regained consciousness. So from here we learn that do wudu and pour the water, your wudu water, on the uh, sick sick person. And here we see that Hazrat Jabir said that I regained consciousness. and i said what do you command me to do with my money o my prophet sallam this aya was later revealed you see kumullahu fi auladikum li zakari misla hazul unsayn allah commands you for your children's inheritance to the male a portion equal to that of two females the son will get double uh, of the uh, daughters if daughters are getting 100000 son will get 200000 dollars okay this is how it was recorded by muslim and an uh, nisai the re- remainder of the six compilers also collected this hadith okay these are the you know references that how this hadith was collected right okay
Okay, now the wife of Saad bin uh, Ar Rabi came to Allah's messenger and said to him, oh, now this is another incident. The wife of Saad bin Ar Rabi came to Allah's messenger and said to him, O oh, Allah's messenger, these are the two daughters of Saad bin Ar Rabi who was killed as a as a martyr, who was killed uh, as a martyr at Ohad. Their uncle looked there, took their money and did not leave anything for them. They will not be married unless they have money, right? Unless they have money. Okay. The Prophet said, Allah will decide on this matter. The ayah about the inheritance was later revealed and Prophet sent word to their uncle commanding them, give two-third of Saad's money to Saad's two daughters and one-eighth for their mother. Okay, two daughters got how many? Two-thirds. And the mother was alive, so the mother get one-eighth of uh, uh, one-eighth. And whatever is left, is left, is yours. Uh, this is in Abu Dawud and Tirmidhi. Okay. This is in Abu Dawud and Tirmidhi. Okay. It is apparent, however, that the first hadith from Jabir was about the case of the last ayah in the surah number 4, 176, and rather this ayah. For uh, the ayah number 11 we are doing. For at the time this incident occurred, Jabir had sisters and did not have daughters, parents, or offsprings to inherit from him. Yet, you know, so this hadith was narrated. Okay. Now, now, how about males? Males get two times the shares of females for inheritance. Allah said, You see, kumullahu fi auladikum lizdakari mislu hazal unsayen. Allah commands you for your children's inheritance to the male, a portion equal to that of two females, right? Um, whatever the daughters will get, son will get double. Okay. Allah commands, observe justice with your children. Uh, actually, the people of Jahiliya used to give the males, but not the females. Uh, and it happens in our countries also. You know, male gets and female doesn't get a share in the inheritance. Therefore, Allah commands that both males and females take a share in the inheritance, although the portion of the males is twice as much as that of the females. There is a distinction because men need money to spend on their dependents. Commercial transactions where the male spend, spends, the male has to spend on their dependents, commercial transactions, work and fulfilling their obligation. Consequently, men get twice the portion of the inheritance that females get. Allah's statement, Allah's statement, Yusi kumullahu fi auladikum lidhakari mislul hazil unsayam. Allah commands you for your children's inheritance to the male a portion equal to that of two females testifies to the fact that Allah is more merciful with children than their own parents are with them. Allah is more merciful, more merciful than their parents. Since he commands the parents to be just and fair with their own children, and there's in Hadith, a captured woman was looking for a child. Captured woman means the woman which, you know, which are captured in, uh, in the battle, right? A captured woman was looking for her child and when she found him, she told him, gave him her breast and nursed him. The Prophet said to the companions, do you think that this woman would willingly throw her child in the fire? They said, oh, Prophet no. So Prophet said, by Allah, Allah is more merciful with his servant than this woman is with her ch own child. Look how she, you know, gave the her breast to nurse to his child. So Allah is more merciful with his servants, then the, this woman is with her own child. Okay. So now we see that, that Allah says uh, that uh, You know not which of them, whether your parents or your children are nearest to you in benefit. This ayah means we have appointed a share, share to the parents and children contrary to the practice of Jahiliya and the early Islamic era when the inheritance would go to the children and parents get a share only if they were named in the will. As Ibn Abbas stated, Allah abrogated this practice and appointed a fixed share for the children and for the parents. One may derive benefit in this life or for the hereafter from his parents, the, the, the likes of which he could not get from his children. The opposite of this could also be true. In the Islamic pre-Islamic era in the Jahiliya, what used to happen when the inheritance would go to the children and parents get a share only if they were 
name in the will. If the will was signed, then the parent used to guess. Otherwise, inheritance used to go to the children. So, which is why, you know, Allah has, Allah knows our psyche. So, Allah has, you know, uh, told us everything in this uh, here. Okay. Allah told us everything. Okay. Now, we see that uh, Al-Bukhari recorded that Ibn Abbas said, Radiyallahu the custom in the old days was that, that the property of the deceased would be inherited by his offspring. As for the parents of the disease, they would inherit by the will of the disease. Then Allah cancelled whatever he willed from that custom and ordained that the male get twice the amount inherited by the female and for each parent a sixth of the whole legacy for the wife one and for the wife an eighth, eighth of the property or a fourth and for the husband a half or a fourth. Okay. And Allah said, uh, you know not which of them whether your parents or your children are nearest to you in benefit okay now the share of the females when they are the only eligible uh, hairs Allah said if only daughters two or more their share is two third of the inheritance so here some people said that the ayah only means two daughters and that more is uh, redundant, which is not true. Nothing in the Quran is unless or redundant. Had the ayah been talking about only two women, it would have said the share of both of them is two thirds. As for the daughters, two or more, the ruling that they get two thirds was derived from this ayah, stating that the two sisters get two thirds and... Um, in the hadith in which there is a hadith in which the Prophet commanded that two thirds be the share of the two daughters of Saad bin Arabi. So this is proven in the book and Sunnah. Wain Kanat Wahidatun Falahun Nisf. Wain Kanat Wahidatun Falahun Nisf. If only one uh, one daughter, her share is half. If there are two daughters, then there are texts to prove that they, they share a half. Therefore, two thirds is the share of the two daughters or sisters, and Allah knows the best. Okay, and Allah knows the best. Uh, share of the parents. Now, the now we'll see the share of the parents. Share of the parents in the inheritance. Allah said, for parents, a sixth share of inheritance to each. If the deceased left children, if no children, and the parents are the only heirs, the mother has a third. If the deceased left brothers or sisters, the mother has a sixth. <clears throat> and uh, there is a hadith Ibn Hatim recorded that Qatada commanded on this ayah Wali abawaihi li kulli wahidin min humasudus. If the deceased left brothers or sisters, the mother has a sixth subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given us this law. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been you know, able to do all this justice. Their presence will be reduced the share of the mother, but they will not inherit if there is only one surviving brother. The mother's share will remain one third, but her share will be reduced if there is more than one surviving brother. The people of knowledge attribute this reduction in, uh, in the mother's share from one third to one sixth to the fact that the father is the one who helps the brothers and sisters of the disease get married, spending from his money, his own money for his purpose. For this purpose, the mother does not spend from her money for this purpose. This is a sound opinion. And how it will be uh, divided? First, the debts uh, are paid off. Then the will, then the fixed inheritance. First, the, uh, the debts of the deceased will be paid off. Then the will will be given. Then the fixed inheritance. Then Allah said, Mimbadi wasiyatim yusi biha odain. The distribution in all cases is after the payment of the legacies. He may have bequeathed or debts. Whatever, you know, will the disease has made, whatever he, loans he has or she has, that will be paid. Then, you know, the distribution will be done. The scholars of the Salaf and the Khalaf agree that paying debts comes from before fulfilling the will. And this is apparent to those who read the ayah carefully. Allah said next, You know not which of them, whether your parents, or your children are nearest to you in benefit. The mother share, the mother share from one third to one sixth, 
to the fact that the father is the one who helps the brothers and sisters of the disease uh, get married, spending from his own money for this purpose. The mother does not spend from her money for this purpose. Okay. Okay. Aba Allah said, Aba kum wabna kum la taduna ayum akrabu lakum nafan. You uh, you know not which of them, whether your parents or your children are nearest to you in benefit. This ayah means we have appointed a share to the parents and children contrary to the practice of Jahiliya, the early Islamic era, when the inheritance would go to the children and parents get a share only if they were named in the will. As Ibn Abbas said, Allah abrogated this practice and appointed a fixed share for the children and for the parents. Uh, one may derive benefit in this life or for the hereafter from his parents, the likes of the which he could not get from his children. The opposite of this could also be true. And Allah knows the best. Uh, Allah says, Faridatum min Allah, ordained by Allah, meaning these appointed shares for male, female, spouses, father, mother, children, these appointed shares of inheritance that we mention and which give some inheritors a bigger share than other is a commandment from Allah that he has decided and ordained. So we shouldn't have any objection why someone is getting one sixth, why one eight, why the son is getting double because these are, these are the appointed shares of inheritance from and the commandments of Allah. And in the Allah kana aliman hakima, and Allah is ever all knower and all wise, who places everything in its rightful place and gives each right each his rightful share. Subhanallah. So we shouldn't say anything about this. We should say amanna saddafna. Okay. Allah knows the best. Okay. Now next ayah, ayah number twelve. Walakum wa and lakum is for you all. Nisfu half. Ma taraka, ma of what taraka, he, she left. Azwajukum, uh, azwaj, wives kum, your, azwajukum, your wives. In if lam did not yakun, he was, is, lahunna, love for, hunna, them, waladun, a child. Uh, fa in, fa, so, in, if, fa in, so, if, kana, he was, is, lahunna, for them, females, waladun, a child. Falakum, then for you all, all, arrubu, the fourth, mimma, from what tarakna, the woman get, the, the woman left, min, from body, after, vasiyatin, a will, bequest, legacy, you see na, the woman, fulfill terms of the will, bequit, biha, with it, au, or, and, dainin, a debt, Wa and lahunna la for hunna them lahunna is for them hunna hunna means female arubu the fourth <coughs> mimma from what tarak tum tarak left tum you tarak tum you all left in if lam did not yakun he is was lakum for you all waladun a child fine then if kana he was is lakum for you all waladun a child Falahunna so la for hunna them. Falahunna so is for them. Asumunu the eight. Okay. Asuman the eight. Mimma from what? Taraktum you all left. Min from body after vasiyatin. A will, a will bequest. Tu suna you all fulfill terms of the will bequest. Biha with it. Au or and then in a death. Were and in if Kana he was is Rajulun a man you Rathu he is inherited Kala Latan Kalala man with no ascendance or descendants Avim Ratun Au or Imratun a woman were and Lahu love for who him Lahu is for him Akhun a brother a brother Subhanallah Allah has you know fixed the shares for each and every one. All relative. Au, au or ukhun a sister. Falikuli fa so likuli for all each. Falikuli so is for all each. Wahidin of one minuma from them to asudusu the one six fine. Then if kanu deva are aksara more min then zalika that 
فارم سو دے شروکاؤ آر پیرنٹ شیئر فی ان اتلس دا ون تھرڈ من فرام وادی آفٹر وسیعتین اول یو سا اٹ از ول کیریڈ آؤٹ بیہا وت اٹ ہر او اور این دین ان ادت غیر ادد این مدار ان ون آف ون ہامنگ انجرنگ وسیعتن اکامانمنٹ ول من از فرام اللہ اللہ و این اللہ اللہ علیم از آلویز آل نوئنگ حلیم آلویز آل فور بیئرنگ آفٹر ایچ آر there is a attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is all knowing, all, you know, okay. Hakeem. Okay. A running translation. You shall inherit one half of your wife's estate if they leave no child. But if they leave behind a child, then you will get one fourth of their estate after fulfilling the terms of their last will and the payment of debts. The distribution will be done after the fulfilling the terms of the their will and the payment of their debts if the disease of the death person has your wife shall inherit one fourth if you leave no child behind you but if you leave a child then they shall get one eighth of your one eighth of your state after fulfilling the terms of your last will and the payments of debts if a man or a woman leaves neither ascendant nor descendant but has left a brother if a man or woman is a kalala okay uh, or a sister they shall each inherit one sixth but if they are more than two they shall share one third of the estate after fulfilling the terms of the last will and the payments of debts without prejudice to the rights of the heirs this is the commandment of allah allah is knowledgeable for bearing subhanallah okay here we see Um, this is ayah number 12 yeah okay we are doing ayah number 12 inshallah okay i did the translation okay okay share of the spouses in in the inheritance allah says walakum nisfum ma taraka azwajukum in lam yakum lahunna waladun fa in kana lahunna waladun falakum rubu mimma tarakna min badi wasiyatin yusina biha odain in that which your wives leave your share is half if they have no child but if they leave a child you get a fourth you get a fourth of that which they leave after payment of their debts and their wills that they have they have a bequeathed or debts allah says to the husband you get half of what your wife leaves behind if she dies and did not have a children if she has a child you get one fourth of what she leaves behind after payment of legacies that she may have bequeathed or her death all the wills and debts and loans and um, the uh, and before also we learn that payment of debts comes from comes before fulfilling the will and then comes the will then the inheritance first we the payments of the debts and the loans will be given then the wills will be paid then the inheritance then the division and there is a consensus on this matter among the scholars and the rule applies to the grandchildren as well as the children even if they are great grandchildren or even further in generation allah says walahunna rubu and mimma taraktum in lam yakum yakun lakum waladun fa in kana lakum waladun falahunna thumunu mimma taraktum min badi wasiyatin tusuna biha aw dain in that which you leave in in that which you leave there there your wife's share is a fourth of you leave no child uh, the share is a fourth if you leave no child but you leave a child they get an eighth of that which you leave after payment of legacies that you may have bequeathed or debts wala hunna rubu mimma taraktum in that which you leave their your wife share is a fourth and if there is more than one wife they all share is in in the fourth or one eighth that the wife gets mim badi wasiyatin allah earlier uh, it is explained in the allah's statement statement mim badi wasiyatin the now what is kalala the meaning of kalala allah said wa in kana rajulun yurasu kalalatun aw imratan if the man or woman whose whose inheritance is in question was left in kalala okay now what is kalala kalala is a der derivative of iklil the crown that surrounds the head what is iklil the crown that surrounds the head 
that surrounds the head. The meaning of Kalala in this ayah is that the person has come from other than the first degree of relative. Kalala refers to the man who has neither descendants nor ascendants. Meaning the Kalala refers to the person who has no child or parents. Okay? No ascendants, no descendants. No child, no parents. All died. Or the children, or he was, he got married and children were not born. Right? So some people are childless. Okay? So Kalala refers to the person who has no child or parents. Okay? The ruling concerning concerning the ruling concerning children of the mother from other than the deceased father. Allah said, But he has left a brother or a sister, meaning from his mother's side, as someone of the Salaf stated, including Saad bin Abi Waqas, we read the hadith. Qatada reported that this is the view of Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Falikulli Waidin Minumas Sudus. Each one of the two gets a sixth, but if more than two, they, they share it in a third. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, each one, yeah. There's a difference between half brothers from the mother's side and the rest of the heirs. Sometimes the mother gets married to the other uh, husband, so uh, they become half brother. First, they get a share in the inheritance on account of their mother. Second, the males and females among them get the same share. Third, they only have a share in the inheritance when the deceased state is, state is inherited in Kalala, for they do not have a share if the deceased has surviving father, grandfather, child, or grandchild. Further, they do not have more than a third, no matter how numerous they were. Allah's statement, Mimbadi Vasiyatin you see, biha audainin ghaira mudar. After payment of legacies, or he or she may have bequeathed a will or death so that no loss is caused to anyone. Uh, means let the will be a will and testament be fair and free of any any type of harm without depriving some rightful heirs from all or part of their share or adding to the fixed portion that Allah ordained for some has. Indeed, whoever does this will have disputed with Allah concerning his decision and division. So there is an authentic hadith. Allah has given each his fixed due right. Therefore, there is no will on, for a rightful uh, inheritor. Wasiyatum min Allahi wallahu ali man halim. This is a commandment from Allah and Allah is ever all knowing most forbearing. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Now we'll do ayah number uh, 13. Tilka, that hududu are limits, boundaries. 11, in ayah number 10, 11, whatever we read, these were the uh, hudud, the boundaries. Uh, Allah of Allah, were and man, whoever you see, he obeys Allah, Allah, were and Rasulahu, Rasul, messenger, who his Rasulahu, his messengers, Yudhilhu, Yudhil, he will admit who him, he will admit him, Jannatin, gardens, paradise, Tajri, it she runs flow, min from, from Tahtiha, underneath it her, Al Anharu, the rivers, uh, plural of Nahar, Khalidina, once abiding forever, eternally, Fiha, in it her, were, and Zalika, that. Al Fauza is the success, Al Azim the most great. So now see this, there's the um, glad tidings for those who obeys Allah's command and they don't object that why this, why that, why um, uh, uh, man is given, the sun is given double. So Tilka, that, uh, so the running translation, okay. These are the limits set by Allah. Those who obey Allah and His Rasul will be admitted to paradise in which rivers flow, flows. So those who obey Allah and the Prophet ﷺ, uh, what will happen? They will uh, be admitted to paradise in which rivers flows and to live therein forever. They will, live, they will abide therein forever and this is the great achievement. This is the great success. So we should have... No objection, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. We shouldn't. Okay. So here we see in this ayah, Allah says that these are the limits of Allah and whoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messengers 
will be admitted to gardens to paradise janna under which the rivers flows to abide therein as that will be the great success today we buy the house here then you know there some insects come the roaches come and then you know uh, we do you know renovations is some you know cracks are there you know the property gets spoiled but there and we are not sure some may allah for you know save us some hurricane sandy comes and we saw the hurricane sandy also you know all the houses and shops were dis, you know destroyed but there will be nothing like that and we are not sure how may, many years we we'll live in these houses we don't know we are even not sure we we'll live for 50 years 60 one day we have to leave the houses we we which we have decorated which we have made one day we have to leave that right but the uh, abide the janna the houses in janna which allah will give us will we will abide there in forever inshallah and the uh, uh, rivers will be in our controls uh, 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 the the jannati the people who will abide in janna will be able to move it to lie, right the rivers to right to left up down it be everything will be will be the owner of the things it will be in our control so allah says tilka hududullah hudud ha dal dal to set a boundary so that it is not closed right hudud in quran is used for two things commands of allah subhanahu wa taala prohibitions that allah subhanahu wa taala has set tilka hududillah these are the limits set by allah so the quran hudud is in quran is used to for two things commands of allah orders of allah and prohibitions that allah has set that you do you, you you have to refrain from such and such thing even if we don't like these laws we have to observe them because these are the hudud the limitations set by allah subhanahu wa taala matter of inheritance is the la, is the last test that a believer goes through before he dies if he doesn't observe these laws even if he obeyed allah subhanahu wa taala all his life yet he fail in the last test of his life so he is not successful and sometimes out of jealousy or something you know uh the deceased person say don't give my property to such and such person so uh, he, he 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 will fail the test the last test of life so hadith a man or a woman might perform actions in obedience to allah subhanahu wa taala in 60 years 70 years 80 years 90 years of their age yet when they are near their death they are about to die they leave an unfair will and thus they acquire the fire of hell don't give my property to the in heritors etc etc so they acquire the fire of hell and those who pass in this last test for him is jannah the paradise true success is not how much money we have left behind for our heirs but the true success is our entry in jannah entry in jannah this will happen only when we obey the laws that allah has set inheritance law any law any law all the laws in the quran okay inshallah may allah make us from that that we uh, obey all the laws and everything uh, whatever allah is you know okay tilka uh, warning against transgressing the limits for inheritance allah said tilka hududullah these are the limits set by allah meaning the farai the signs of inheritance are allah's set limits this includes what allah has allotted for the heirs according to the degree of relation they have to the disease and according to the degree of relation they have to the disease and their degree of dependency on him therefore do not transgress or violate them to do the distribution according to the commands which allah has set here in these ayat so allah said wamai wa may yuti yuti allah wa rasulahu and whoever obeys allah and his messengers regarding the inheritance and does not add or decrease any of these fixed shares by use of tricks and plots there shouldn't be any tricks any plots by sharing this division rather he gives each his appointed share as allah commanded in this aya uh, allah ka has ordained commanded and decided yudkhilu then what will happen yudkhilu jannatin tajri min ta'ati al-anhar khalidin fiha wa dhalik al-fawz al-azim then he will be he or she will be she will be permitted to gardens under which rivers flow in paradise to abide therein and is the great success okay so it's a very scary hadith i told you the gist of the hadith a man or you know what will happen 
the matter of inheritance is the last test that a believer goes through before he dies. If he doesn't observe these laws, even if he obeyed Allah's subhanahu wa ta'ala all his life, 50, 60, 70 years, and yet he failed in the last test of his life, then he will they will acquire the fire of hell. May Allah save us from that, inshallah. Okay, next ayah 14 we'll uh, do next time, inshallah. Uh, okay, because time is up. <clears throat> so we'll con conclude here, inshallah. Barakallahu fi ilmik wa malik wa risukum wa qatukum wa ahalukum wa malukum. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Subhana rabbika rabbil aizati amma yasifoon. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Rabbana taqabal minna inna ka anta sami'u laleem. Wa tuwa alayna inna ka anta tawabu raheem. Wa akhiru dawana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdika. Nashadu la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now I would like to take your reflections. Okay, Bismillah. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, Bismillah.